بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, This is section 4.5 and it's about summary of curve sketching uh, We will need a lot of information in this section All these informations we studied before So especially for 4.1, 4.3 Please watch the videos before you start here Also uh, limits at infinity and infinite limits are important here well, uh, let us uh, read these guidelines for sketching curves. When we, uh, when we want to sketch uh, curves by hand, uh, we will have to find uh, this information, the domain. What is the domain of the function? Domain, uh, all possible values of x set of all possible values of x or set of values of x for which fx is defined. You can review chapter 1 for the domain. And uh, because the domain will determine the place in which the function is graphed, uh, intercepts, the y-intercept, we put x0 and the x-intercept we put y0 uh, and solve for x so we need to find these intercepts the intersection between the graph and the y-axis is called the y-intercept and the intersection between the graph and the x-axis is called the x-intercept so for example here this is the y-intercept and these points are for x-intercepts symmetry we need to discuss the symmetry whether the function is even odd or neither for example this function is even f of negative x equals f of x for all x in the domain if you replace x by negative x you get the same y for example y equals x square y equals x to the power 4 uh, this function is odd f of negative x equals negative f of x this information is helpful. If you know that the function is even, then you graph half of the of the function and the other half you, you can get it by symmetry. An odd function is symmetric with respect to origin. So if you know a point x, y, you would know an, another point negative x and negative y. So this also helpful. Sum of odd functions, y equals x, x cubed, 1 over x. Also, sine and cosine are periodic functions, so this will help in graphing them. Now the asymptotes, the horizontal asymptote. To find the horizontal asymptotes, we find the limit when x approaches infinity of the function and when x approaches negative infinity. If this limit is a number L, then y equals to L is a horizontal asymptote. And this is a horizontal line in which the graph approaches this line. The graph may intersect the horizontal asymptote, and we find the intersection points by equating the equation of the horizontal asymptote and the equation of the function. So we put f of x equals L, and we solve this equation for x to find the intersection points between the horizontal asymptote and the curve. If this limit is not L, if it is infinity or negative infinity, it will also, it's helpful information. There is no horizontal asymptote in this case, but we will know that when X approaches infinity, the graph goes up, if it is infinity or goes down. So this fact is also important. So always find the limit of F of X when X approaches infinity and negative infinity. Also the vertical asymptotes. These are the definitions of the vertical asymptotes. The line x equals to a is a vertical asymptote, and the graph approaches this line either from the right or from the left or from both. So when x approaches a from the right infinity, from the left, one of these, if any one of these, at least one of these is true, then x equals to a is a vertical asymptote. Uh, when we have rational functions, means polynomial over polynomial then the zeros of the denominator will give you always uh, 
the equation of the vertical asymptotes. So equating the denominator to zero after canceling any common factors, this is important because if, if, if you have a zero of the numerator and the denominator together at the same time, then it's the equation, then it is not a vertical asymptote. We don't have a vertical asymptote at that value of x. We have a whole. For example, x over uh, x minus x square. Here, uh, this function, I can take x as a common factor from the denominator and I cancel x with x and I have one over one minus x. So the equation of the vertical asymptote here is x equals to one. But at x equals to zero, I have a whole, not a vertical uh, asymptote. If, if it is not a rational function, then we have to find uh, the limit at the end point of the domain. If there is an end point of the domain, if the domain starts, for example, from zero to infinity. So we have to find the limit when x approaches zero from the right to see what happens there, okay? We could have, an asymptote, a vertical asymptote at zero, or we could not, okay? For example, uh, y equals ln x. This function, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals to zero. The domain is zero to infinity, while square root of x, also the domain is from zero to infinity, but closed in this case, closed in zero to infinity, the domain. But at zero, we do not have a vertical asymptote. For, uh, it is always uh, an, an remarkable or advisable to find advisable to find the limit when x approaches zero from the right if the domain is from zero to infinity. Okay, I, the end point of the domain computes limit f of x when x approaches a from the right or from the left where it is possible. And then you find the first derivative f prime, and you find the interval of increase and decrease. Uh, and the critical numbers and locate the local maximum and the local minimum values. You may use the first derivative test or the second derivative test. Uh, refer to 4.1 and 4.3 for this, please. And then you find if double prime and you find the intervals of concavity, concave up and concave down and the inflection points, okay? And then you plot these points. You plot the intercepts, the maximum, the minimum, points, the inflection points, you plot these points and you let the curve, a curve pass by all of these points, okay? And you use the limits and the horizontal asymptotes and the vertical asymptotes. And you may plot some additional points also to sketch the graph of the function. So let us do uh, all of these steps here for uh, certain uh, questions or examples. Let us start by graphing this function. Well, what is the domain of this function? This is a rational function. So we, we do not allow the denominator to be zero. So x squared minus one cannot be zero, means x squared cannot be one, means x is not positive or negative one. The uh, solution of x squared equals to one is x equals plus or minus one. So the domain would be all real numbers except positive and negative one. And from here, we this is a rational function, so we know that uh, we have vertical asymptotes. Immediately, we have vertical asymptotes x equals to 1 and x equals to a negative 1 because they are zeros of the denominator. Uh, and also, I would like to know what happens uh, when the graph approaches 2x square over x square when x approaches 1 from the right, for example, what would happen to this uh, function, okay? Uh, with it, should it go to positive or negative infinity? So if I replace x by 1, I'll have 0 in the denominator. But if I replace x by 1.1, okay, I'm coming, I'm approaching 1 from the right. So 1.1 squared minus 1 would be positive, and this would be positive, so the limit would be infinity. While the limit when x approaches 1 from the left of 2x squared, x squared minus 1, here I replace x by 
0.9, a number to the left of 1. So I will have 0.9 square minus 1, and this is just uh, a negative number. And uh, 2x squared is always positive, so the limit here is negative uh, infinity. So also uh, around negative 1, when x approaches negative 1 from the right, I can replace, this is negative 1, when you approach from the right, okay, a negative 0.9, so negative 0.9 squared, this would be negative, and negative 1 from the left means negative 1.1. If I replace x by negative 1.1, then this would be positive. So I know just from this that the graph, let me sketch the graph here. I know that at 1 I have a vertical asymptote, x equals to negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. When x approaches 1 from the right, the graph goes to infinity. So when I approach 1 from the right, the graph will go in this direction. From the left, it will go to negative infinity. So from the left of 1, the graph goes like this. From the left of negative 1, the graph goes to infinity. This is negative 1 from the left. It goes to infinity. The left, the graph goes to infinity. And from the right, it goes to negative infinity. OK, after the domain, uh, let us consider the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Well, to find the x-intercepts, I put y 0. And when I put y 0, this means that 2x squared over x squared minus 1 is 0. But this means that 2x squared is, is 0, if you cross multiplication. This means always that the x-intercepts are the zeros of the numerator in case of rational functions. So whenever you have a rational function, the zeros of the denominator will give you the vertical asymptotes, and the zeros of the numerator will give you the x-intercepts. Solving this equation, x0, uh, x equals to 0. So there is one x-intercept at 0. And if I replace x by 0, I'll get the y-intercept, which is also 0. So I have the point 0, 0. So I know that the graph passes by this point 0, 0. So I can expect that the graph will be like this and like this from the information I have up to now because it approaches the asymptote from here and it goes to negative infinity and it passes by 0, 0. So this looks fine up to now. Okay, what is after the intercepts? Uh, let us find the horizontal asymptotes. How to find the horizontal asymptotes? We find the limit when x approaches infinity of 2x squared over x squared minus 1. You can uh, use any method you like. You can use L'Hopital's here because it's infinity over infinity section 4.4, or you can take as we did in chapter 2 the highest power. So the limit is 2. So y equals to 2 is a horizontal asymptote. If you take the limit when x approaches negative infinity, uh, there, there will be no difference because uh, you will take the highest powers, uh, cancel, you will have 2. So when x approaches infinity or negative infinity, y equals to 2 is the horizontal asymptote. So this is a new information, y equals to 2, this line is a horizontal asymptote. And I can expect now that the graph is like this. It will approach the vertical asymptote here and the horizontal asymptote here, and it will approach the vertical asymptote here and the horizontal asymptote here, okay? So this would be the graph of this function. Uh, using 
the information I have up to now. Okay, what else? Uh, domain, asymptotes, uh, intercepts, symmetry. Let us discuss the symmetry. Let us find f of negative x. f of negative x, I replace x by negative x. 2x square, so I write it 2 times negative x all square over x square minus 1, so I replace x by negative uh, x. Now, if I raise negative 1 to the power 2, I will have 1. So, in fact, negative x all square is exactly x square. So, this is f of x. So, the function is uh, even and the graph is symmetric about the y-axis. And if you notice, yeah, the graph is symmetric about the y-axis. That's correct. So this also uh, uh, this also agrees with all the information before. No contradiction between the information up to now. Okay, so now I can start finding f prime of x. I will have this is f of x. I will have the quotient rule to find f prime. So x square minus 1 to the power 2. Derivative of 2x square is 4x times x square minus 1 minus. Derivative of the denominator is 2x times 2x square in the numerator. So I have 4 x well i can take a common factor let me always take a common factor taking a common factor makes uh, simplification easier so what do we have i have two as a common factor i have x also as a common factor so now i still have two here i'll multiply two times x square minus one so i have two x square minus two times one is two and then two x I took it as a common factor, so minus 2x square. 2x square cancels with 2x square. So the first derivative would be 2 negative 4x, negative 2 times 2x over x square minus 1 to the power 2. This is the first derivative. Now, to find the critical numbers, we find the values at which f prime is not defined. f prime is not defined, does not exist at f prime, does not exist at x equals positive negative 1, because x squared minus 1, 0 means x equals plus or minus 1. But these two values do not belong to the domain of f, because domain of f or real numbers except the plus or minus one. So these are not critical numbers. Notice that the definition of critical numbers says if the numbers are in the domain, they, they would be critical numbers. If not, they are not critical numbers. So the only critical numbers here we will have when f prime is zero. And f prime is zero means negative four x over x squared minus one square is zero. And this means that the numerator is zero so x is zero so at x equals to zero we have a critical number so the only critical number is at x equals to zero and i can now make the table and study the signs of uh, if a prime notice that at negative one it is uh, undefined at, at one it is undefined so this is f prime. What are the signs of f prime in these uh, intervals? Well, this is f prime. Notice that the denominator is always positive and the numerator is negative. Uh, so around zero, negative four x will determine the sign of f prime then. If I choose a number greater than zero, half or two, then f prime would be negative. But if I choose a number less than zero, negative half or negative one, negative two, sorry, uh, f prime would be 
positive. So here it is decreasing, here decreasing, here increasing, and here it's increasing. So is it from negative infinity to negative one, it is increasing indeed. Our graph is correct up to now. From negative one to zero, it's increasing. From zero to one, it is decreasing. From one to infinity, it is decreasing. So everything is fine with us. And I have a local maximum at zero. So local maximum uh, at f of zero, which is zero. So the point zero, zero is a local maximum. And that's what is happening actually. So our graph up to now is accurate. Now we need to find f double prime to discuss concavity. Uh, this is f prime. Okay. Again, I will use the quotient rule x squared minus 1 to the power 4. The derivative of the numerator is negative 4. minus negative 4x the numerator times the derivative of the denominator i'll use the quotient rule uh, sorry the chain rule derivative of x squared minus 1 is is 2x now to simplify f double prime i need to take common factors i have two terms this is the first term this is the second term negative 4 I have negative 4 in both terms and I have x square minus 1 to the power 1 in both terms now the first term if you divide the first term by the common factor you will have x square minus 1 okay negative 4 cancels with negative 4 and you subtract the powers and then I have negative here negative 4 has been taken so i still have 2x times 2x so that's 4x square and x square minus 1 has been taken so negative 4 and x square minus 1 is here the common factor we still have negative 2 times 2 negative 4x square over x square minus 1 to the power 4 cancel 1 of x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 to the power 4 I will have x squared minus 1 to the power 3 and here I will have negative 4 times x squared minus 4x squared that's minus 3x squared minus minus 1 uh, if you want I can multiply okay or take a minus outside so I will have 4 times 3x squared plus 1 either taking a minus outside or multiplying this minus inside uh, same so this is f double prime and now uh, let us find the zeros of f double prime again i have f double prime does not exist at 1 and negative 1 but they do not belong to the domain uh, look to 3x squared plus 1 this is always positive. X squared plus positive number, always positive. It has no real zeros. So F double prime has no real zeros. Okay. And in fact, uh, the signs of F double prime now, the numerator is always positive. So it depends on, it depends on the denominator. Well, I have negative 1 and 1 if is not defined if double prime does not exist here and if is uh, is not defined they are not in the domain but now the signs of f double prime well the signs of x square minus 1 are the signs of x square minus 1 to the power 3 so you can just think of x square minus 1 we, we, we said before that in section 4.1 or 4.3 that if between the zeros, between negative 1 and 1, the sign is opposite to the sign of x squared. So the sign here is negative. 
anyway you can replace x by zero you will get negative number here and this is always positive so you know that if double prime is negative here positive here and here so here it is concave up here it's concave down here it's concave up and no inflection points because uh, negative one and one do not belong to the domain of the function so is it okay yeah here it's concave up negative one to one it's concave down from one to infinity it's concave up so it seems that this graph is accurate uh, you still need to choose more points plot more points to make sure that at two at two for example at three where is the curve at two is it here or is it here or is it here you, you find this by plotting uh, points okay Fi you use the calculator replace x by two uh, three uh, you can also one point five okay to check here and then whatever values here you will you will write the same values to the left because the function is is even but this is an acceptable graph of this function uh, i hope it's clear for you let us graph another uh, function another example well let us start by the domain This is not a rational function because we have square root in the denominator, but similar, uh, uh, we, we do not accept the denominator to be zero. So x plus one shouldn't be zero, so x shouldn't be negative one. But also we have a square root and we know that whenever we have a square root, how to find the domain of the square root, we x plus one has to be greater than or equal to zero. But here, these two will give you uh, the, the condition x plus one should be greater than zero. So x should be greater than negative one. So the domain is from negative one to infinity. Negative one is not possible because it will make the denominator zero. So that's the domain of this function. This means that the graph would be only from negative one to infinity. So, there is no graph to the left of negative one okay from negative one to infinity this would be the graph of the function all right now this is an end point of the domain the negative one so i'd like to know what happens at negative one i cannot approach negative one from the left because it's not in the domain but i can approach negative one from the right so if I, if I approach negative one from the right, if x approaches negative one from the right, what would happen to the function, to f of x? If I replace x by negative one, I'll have zero, so it is infinity or negative infinity. So if I replace from the right to the right of negative one, I replace x by negative 0.9. Negative 0.9 plus one would be positive, so this would be positive, so the limit is infinity. So this means that I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. The line x equals negative one is a vertical asymptote because the limit from the right is infinity. So I have a vertical asymptote here and the graph approaches the asymptote like this. It will go to infinity when x approaches negative one from the right. All right. Uh, x intercepts, y intercepts. Well, remember, x intercepts are the zeros of the numerator, so it is zero. Y intercepts, you put x zero, so it is zero. So it passes by the point zero, zero. So if the graph passes by the point zero, zero and approaches the asymptote, and goes to infinity from the right, I expect that the graph will go like this, okay? Let us see. Mm, intercepts, domain, vertical asymptote. Let me try the horizontal asymptote. Find the limit when x approaches infinity of the function x square over square root of x plus one. Can I 
uh, find the limit when x approaches negative infinity here no because the domain is from negative 1 to infinity x cannot approach negative infinity in this graph so i can only find the limit when x approaches infinity and to find this limit i take the highest power as usual term with the highest power so now x square over square root of x 2 minus half, 3 over 2. And if I replace x by infinity, infinity to the power 1.5 is infinity. So there is no horizontal asymptote. But I know that when x approaches infinity, when x approaches infinity, the graph goes to infinity. So the graph may go like this. This could be the graph of this function up to now, using all of these informations. Let us check the symmetry. If negative x would be negative x to the power 2 over square root of negative x plus 1. This is f of x. I'll have x square over square root of negative x plus 1. Well, this is not f of x because f of x is square root of x plus 1, not negative x plus 1. And it is also not negative f of x, because negative f of x is just negative x square over square root of x plus 1, and these two are not equal. So the function is neither even nor odd, and there is no symmetry. And this uh, agrees with this information. This function is not symmetric, is not symmetric about the y-axis, and it's not symmetric about the origin. Good. So now let us find f prime of x. I will use the quotient rule. The denominator is square. Okay. And now the derivative of the numerator times the denominator x square times the derivative of the denominator derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x times the derivative of x plus 1 which is 1 now to get rid of this denominator I can multiply by square root of x plus 1 over square root of x plus 1. So I'll have 2x times x plus 1, because square root times square root will give you x plus 1, minus, let me even multiply by 2 to get rid of this 2. So I'll have 4 here, minus, x square because 2 times square root of x plus 1 would be cancelled with 2 uh, x square root of x plus 1 in the denominator I will have 2 x plus 1 times x plus 1 to the power half would be x plus 1 to the power 1 plus half 3 over 2 4 x square minus x square is 3 x square plus 4 x So this is f prime. I can take x is, uh, as a common factor and write it 3x plus 4. This will help to find the zeros of f uh, prime. Now, f prime does not exist at negative 1, but negative 1 is not in the domain because the domain is from negative 1 to infinity. But f prime is 0. When 3x plus 4, when x is 0, this x, the numerator, x is 0, or x, 3x plus 4, 0, 3x equals negative 4, x negative 4 over 3. Negative 4 over 3 is negative 1.3, and this does not belong to the domain. So it's not helpful 
the domain is from negative one to infinity, so it's not a critical number. So the only critical number for this function is zero. This is the only critical number. Negative one is there. My graph here would be from negative one to infinity. And let me check the sign of f prime. Between negative one and zero, negative half, for example, three times negative half plus four is positive, times negative half. So here it's negative. Above zero, this would be positive. So the graph here is uh, decreasing, here is increasing, and I'll have a local minimum at f of zero. And f of zero is, is zero because it passes by zero, zero. f of zero is zero. So zero, zero is a minimum point. And that's what we get here. And from negative one to zero, it's decreasing. Excellent. And from zero to infinity, it's increasing. So this information matches our graph here. That's excellent. So now let us find f double prime. Well, this is f prime. I will use, I will use this one, this definition. Raise the denominator to the power two. Okay. And the derivative of the numerator, 6x plus 4 times the denominator. Minus the numerator. Times the derivative of the denominator. 2 times 3 over 2 is 3. 3 over 2 minus 1 is half. Derivative of x plus 1 is 1. How to simplify f double prime, remember? The gold advice, take a common factor. Well, what common factors do we have? 6x plus 4. I have here 3x plus 4. Okay. So the only common factor is x plus 1 to the power. I have power 3 over 2. I have power half. Power half is smaller. So from the first term, I have 2 times 6x plus 4, which is 12x plus 8 times x plus 1 to the power 3 over 2 over x plus 1 to the power half. Subtract the powers you get x plus 1 to the power 3 over 2 minus half or 1 minus 3 times this. It's a long calculation, but it's a straightforward computation and it is uh, good for us to practice these kind of computations, especially in this level of mathematics. x plus 1 to the power half, x plus 1 to the power 3, 3 minus half, 2.5 or 5 over 2. Let us expand this, 12x squared, 8x plus 12x, plus 8 minus 9x squared minus 12x. So 12x squared minus 9x squared is 3x squared. 20x minus 12 is 8x and 8.
Now, if double prime does not exist at negative one, but negative one is not in the domain, are there any real zeros of the numerator? They will make f double prime zero if there is any. Uh, you need to find b square minus 4ac, the discriminant. So b square is 64, 8 square, 64, minus 4 times b square minus 4ac times 3 times 8. The answer is negative 32. So the discriminant is negative. This means the zeros of 3x square plus 8x plus 8 are not real. So it cannot be zero. So no real zeros. And the numerator is always positive then. It's always positive. If there are no real zeros, then either it is positive or negative. 3x squared plus 8x plus 8. They are always positive. If you put x any number, it would be always positive. In the denominator, uh, I start from negative 1. If you replace x by a number greater than negative 1, also, the denominator would be always positive. So, in fact, if double prime is always positive, this is always positive. If you choose for, for any number x in negative 1 to infinity. So, this means that if double prime, f is concave up in negative 1 to infinity because f double prime is always positive and that's the case it's concave up here and no inflection points so this seems that the graph is accurate just i advise you to choose more points replace x by negative half by one by half one one point five two three okay and just uh, make the graph more accurate but this is an acceptable graph of this function using the calculus information let us sketch the graph of another example and this would be the last one this video and we continue in another videos because each example takes some time to solve i advise you to stop the video here and try to graph this by yourself try to examine your information in the course what is the domain here or real numbers because e to the power x the domain of e to the power x or real numbers this is the graph of e to the power x so no vertical asymptotes if the graph is all real numbers there will be no vertical asymptotes immediately okay either zeros of the denominators or end of the interval no nothing here both does not exist okay what else x intercepts what is the x intercept put y zero e to the power x cannot be zero because as you can see here e to the power x is always greater than zero. This is a horizontal asymptote. So the only solution of this equation is x equals to zero. So the x-intercept is x equals to zero. And the y-intercept, if we put x zero, zero times e to the power zero, zero times one is zero. So the graph passes by the point zero, zero. What about the horizontal asymptotes? Let us find the limit when x approaches infinity. x infinity, e to the power infinity, as you can see, as infinity. When x approaches infinity, e x approaches infinity. Infinity times infinity is infinity. So there is no horizontal asymptote here because the graph goes to infinity from the right. While if you take the limit when x approaches negative infinity, you will have negative infinity here. And e to the power negative infinity is what? When x approaches negative infinity, e x approaches 
zero because y equals to zero is a horizontal asymptote. Well, negative infinity times zero is an indeterminate form, and you can check section uh, 4.4 here how to deal with this. There is a video especially for infinity times zero indeterminate forms. And there he says, take x below or ex below. If I take x below and find the derivative, negative 1 over x squared, then I'll get x squared ex. In fact, it's more complicated than x times ex. So we said that we choose the function that makes things easier, not difficult. So I take ex below, so I write it e to the power negative x. Of course, e to the power negative x is e to the power x, but this is from below, okay? So now if I replace x by negative infinity, I have infinity over, negative infinity over, over, e to the power negative negative infinity, e to the power infinity, which is infinity over infinity, and now I can use L'Hopital's rule and find the derivative of both. Derivative of the numerator is 1, derivative of the denominator is e to the power negative x times the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. Well, this is if you want, if you take it up now, it is negative e to the power x. And e to the power negative infinity is 0, we have seen. So negative 0, 0. So the line y equals to 0 is a horizontal asymptote. And the graph approaches this line when x approaches negative infinity. So let us put the information we have up to now. The line x equals to 0, y equals to 0 is a horizontal asymptote. And the graph approaches it from infinity, from negative infinity. So either from here or from here, we don't know. But the graph approaches 0 when x approaches negative infinity. What else? 0, 0 is a point on the graph. 0, 0 is a point on the graph. So, so the graph here, there is an intersection between the graph and the horizontal asymptote. And the graph goes to infinity when x approaches infinity. The graph goes to infinity. Okay, so either now the graph will be like this or like this. It could approach both graphs, this or this, uh, agrees with, satisfies all the conditions. No vertical asymptote, domain or real number, zero, zero, passes by zero, zero, horizontal asymptote. No horizontal asymptote, y equals to zero from the left, from the right, the graph goes to infinity. So let us continue and see which one of them is, is correct. What about symmetry? It's clear that the function is neither symmetric, but let us find f of negative x. So it's negative x e to the power negative x. This is not f of x and it is not Negative f of x, negative f of x is negative x, e x. They are not the same. So the graph is neither even nor odd. Okay. Horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote, intercepts, domain, symmetry. Let us now find f prime of x. I will use the product rule. So x times e x, derivative of x is e x. Derivative of ex is ex. So this is the first derivative. If I take ex as a common factor, I put it to zero to find the zeros, the critical numbers. Ex cannot be zero. So the only solution here uh, when a x plus one is zero or when x is negative one. So negative one is a critical number. And if I choose a number less than negative one, negative 2 for example this would be negative 
greater than negative one zero or whatever it would be positive so the function here is decreasing and the function here is increasing and that i have a local i have a local minimum at f at negative one and f of negative one f of negative one is negative e to the power negative one and negative e to the power negative one is approximately negative 0.4 so at negative one and negative 0.4 if i say that this is negative one okay at negative one and negative 0.4 so this point so now this graph is not correct it's not the above one it is it passes here by this point so let me say that the graph is like this okay is it from negative one yeah from negative one to infinity it's increasing and now from negative infinity to negative one, it's decreasing. Decreasing and approaching this number, okay? So decreasing, it has to come like this. So let us see, the concavity will tell us more about, about this part. But up to now, it's it's like this, it could be it could be like this or it could be like this decreasing okay so let us see what would happen the concavity tell us what tell us what so let us find f double prime of x well i'll use uh, i'll use this one the ex derivative times x plus 1 plus ex times the derivative of x plus 1 is 1 so that's the second derivative. If I take ex as a common factor, I have x plus 1 plus 1 or x plus 2. If you put it equals to 0, it has one solution that x equals negative 2. ex cannot be 0. So negative 2 is the 0 of f double prime. And if I choose a number less than negative 2, negative 3, f double prime would be negative. Greater than negative 2, negative 1, it would be positive. So here it's concave up, here it's concave down, and negative 2, and f of negative 2 is an inflection point. What is f of negative 2? Negative 2 e to the power negative 2. And this number is negative point three approximately. So negative two and negative point three. This is point four, this is negative point three somewhere here. So from negative infinity to negative 2, it's concave down. And from negative 2 to infinity, it's concave up. So concave up from negative 2 to infinity. And here, it's concave down. Of course, it's not a straight line. It's a curve. like this so this is the graph of this function decreasing decreasing up to negative one increasing from one to infinity concave down up to negative two concave up and negative two and f of negative two this point is an inflection point because concavity changes so this is the graph of this function and you can if you like replace x by 1 
uh, 1.5, negative a half, to make sure, make the graph more accurate. But this is again an acceptable graph of this function. I'll stop here and continue in another uh, video. Hope you enjoyed sketching graphs.